Last year, the PGA Championship was just in Rochester, just down the road from us yeah. here at, at Oak Hill. And so we got out there for, I think it was, was it the Tuesday mm, practice round? Wednesday practice round? I think it was the day one before. Of the, one of the practice rounds. Opening round, yeah. That was, because that was, I know that was both of our first, really, like, PGA experience. Yeah. Because uh, I know I'd never been. I had been to, like, a seniors tour event at Turning Stone way back. Yeah. But it was, like, it, it wasn't at and this that is the level. first. This was, like, the first... One of the first bigger ones since the live PGA split, it was. right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we got to see. So we went up. We went up for the practice round uh, up in uh, Rochester, which is like an hour from us. Uh, and I know we left so early. Yeah. What time we, we leave did. here? We left here at like five, right? Yeah, something like that. Get I think we there. got because I think doors open at seven. It was like yeah, and let's like a go. Shuttle. Yeah. Let's spend the day and like yeah. see. It. And it was. It was like an all inclusive. Like we got the tickets. Was... It was like tickets plus, <laughs> and so it was like whatever food and non alcoholic drinks you want. You just spill something on the brand new Acorn Hills. See, Nate, this is why we don't. This is why we can't have fucking nice <laughs> things, dude. You gotta be kidding me. But we had the the PGA Championship experience plus. That was like any food you wanted, any non alcoholic drinks for the day was just mm-hmm. included. You just showed up. Here's my wristband, and you're walking out with burgers, chicken sandwich, fries. How many, yeah, we had glizzy stuff. We all had the way. five meals. Easily. Easily. They had, Easily. I remember they had the French toast sticks there for the breakfast, too, because they were so worth <laughs> You were so excited about it. <laughs> yeah. No, that but was But cool. it was so worth it. And I think to go back again, I'd rather go to a practice round because you get so much closer to the players. They're more relaxed. They're talking and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's. You don't feel like you're missing some of the action by being there. Because I know people that were there on, like, Sunday. And it was just like, you you can't follow what's going on closing out a tournament like that when you're physically there. You miss so much. Well, it's cool to just watch these guys from all different walks of life. And guys that have been watching on TV for, like, their whole careers and some of the upcoming ones. Just watch how just absolutely dialed they are and, like, how they approach the game and stuff. I remember... We walked down a one fairway. Like, we got there, and it was just like, oh, my. First off, this place is pristine. But then yeah. it was like, what do we go do first? Like, who's... Yeah. People weren't really out yet, so a lot of guys were slowly coming out to the, the practice screen. We walked, like, 10 miles that day. Yeah, easily. Easily. I remember standing down alongside one's fairway and watching some people tee off, and then we saw a bomb, and it was like, that was definitely Bryson. It was Bryson. It was the first person <laughs> he we saw. ripped one down. I think we might have... I think we posted up behind one green for a little bit and watched some balls come in, guys hitting approaches. Because that's like, had a false front and then like a false side almost. And then mm-hmm. people were going down that runoff. That's weird. I remember also, I don't I don't know what hole it was, but it was the par five heading back towards the clubhouse and the tee box was up elevated. And we were like between where they were teeing off and the fairway. Do you remember that? Like they were up above us and it was like Max oh. Homa, JT, and whoever the third yeah. was with. I think it was Gary Woodland. And they were hitting these tee balls over our heads out to the yep. fairway. Yeah, and then I remember because when they walked up, uh, Scott Van Pelt was with them. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. We chatted with him a bit because he yeah. was following them along, and he gave was... him a little. I said, "What up, S- SVP?" He's like, <laughs> yeah. "Dog." Oh, that made me happy. Yeah, I think we followed JT and Max for a bit. We were yeah. like those guys, but I mean, we saw we got really close with Brooks. JT or Brooks DJ and mm-hmm. whoever the third was in their practice round. Like we were like, I mean, from from you to me apart almost from them. That one at that, that par five going back up. Yeah, um, because we jumped, we, we jumped to the tee box. Yes, everybody was crowding around the green. And we're like, yo, let's go to the next tee. TJ's like, no, let's go to that tee box. Posted like, up right. real close, and there's DJ and his, his brother Austin, like right, like feet from us. Yeah, and watch, dude. <laughs> watching Zach Johnson and Brooke Ke- Brooks Kepka piss on a drive like that, that close in person, like that was this one of the scariest moments of my life. That, yeah. that I felt bad for that. Golf and ball. then for Brooks to go on and win that Sunday too. Yeah. I mean, he, he was dialed yeah. that day. Yep. I remember also, um, I don't know what hole it was. I think I want to say 12 or 13. It's the, the green is way in. elevated up. And, yeah. and Victor Hovland was like, the the green is like 20, 30 feet above the fairway. Oh, with and his Vic Hovland coach? with his his swing coach or yeah. whoever I don't know the guy's name, but he was they were betting hundreds on are you going to put this putt in? Are you going to yeah. put it within so and so? Because it was like a double breaking and double elevation like break uh, putt. Yeah, 
I think that one of the coolest things was seeing how these players went about their practice rounds too. Insane. Like they're they're hitting some from the fairways mm-hmm. wherever they end up, but then they're also throwing balls in the rough because these mm-hmm. guys don't play these courses up here. Like we know that the rough here in upstate New York is very different from the rough in Florida. Sure. And so adjusting and being able to hit out of those two different greens, and it was it was dry on Wednesday, but everybody knew there was a lot of rain mm-hmm. coming in later on. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it poured. I had buddies that went Saturday and Sunday, and it poured yeah. all day. It was awful. And seeing them throw it on different practice holes, too, and, and just kind of like, you know, it's probably going to be a pin over here on Sunday and, and putting around. You know, I mean, each of them took five, six different putts on each green. Yep. Just yep. caddies taking notes. A lot of them had swing coaches with them, you know, talking through stuff. Mm-hmm. We went to, uh, I think one of the coolest ones was near near kind of like the last maybe like hour hour and a half we sat on the bleachers on 18 yeah but it was like kind of like the front part of it so you're still you're probably like 15 feet above like the green yeah. and you're looking down at it and watching these guys finish their rounds um coming in like we got to see scotty because he was like that's when he was he, he was still on his hot streak yeah but watching him excuse me like navigate those really really deep roughs um off the green there at oak hill watching him you know watching um Rory watching all those guys like it was that was so yeah. that was so so cool. I remember seeing Phil was out there too because it was again yeah, there's yeah. just a lot of those live guys were back and it was I think it like you said it was one of the first tournaments that they were all back at together. Yeah. Um, even just hanging out at the the driving range and watching yeah that was them. cool too. I remember watching Rom for a while just chipping. I mean we had to watch him for like 20, 30 minutes just watching hit little chip shots up on that that chipping green yeah. but it was cool just walking that whole facility for the day um there that remember that driving range so they have it was like a driving range into another driving range it was like yeah, extended yeah and watching bryson like take a three wood and hit it farther than some of these guys are hitting their I mean, he was like next to keegan Bradley yeah keegan, and Brian. that's the other one keegan was just pissing on balls it was kind of windy that day and i remember bryson hit one and it was so funny to like watch keegan just go <laughs> like yeah. obviously he's golfed with him before but he was just like holy shit yeah you know some guys are just built different one downside though i remember we just we never saw ricky that day i wanted to follow him around and watch and he just he didn't come out at for those all of you day. that are yeah obviously you guys are just getting to know us but this man loves ricky fowler like just <sighs> loves the game loves the guy i've we uh in one of our first videos that ever went like kind of like you know got big on instagram got big i put in quotes but we wore the most flashy outfits we could think. The man's got the whole like 2008 Ricky Fowler orange highlighter outfit, head to toe. Looks great. I've got it all. I've got the shorts version. I've got the <laughs> pants version. I got the Q zip if it's cold. So does Mitch though. Do you know Mitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's dude. He's got he's got that shit. It's so funny. But... I mean, it was cool seeing like I'm a big Max Homa guy and JT. That was so that was seeing cool. them too. Yeah. Um, watching Kisner too. He's just you know seeing him with with dewey because i mean you see videos of his caddy dewey and the dude's calves are just fucking massive oh remember that one guy i filmed the (laughs) when we were walking up four or five and i showed that guy with the calves the spectator and he were like are you filming his calves?" yeah yeah. (laughs) he like zoomed in on it (laughs) well well yeah dude but that was oh my god man yeah there are some of those guys though I forget what hole it was. That par five, it goes up into like up the hill, and then we were sitting into on the, the green little bowl, there, the bowl green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were sitting there for maybe mm, like twenty minutes at this point because we didn't walk around all day. It was after you know our third or fourth chicken sandwich. Dude. Literally, little chicken <laughs> sammies. We're sitting there, and I'm watching these balls fly up. I can, you can kind of see far, like, and it's a little downhill, so you're only seeing like really their like head. But there's like three or four chip shots or like long iron shots that come up into the green and they are blind shots, but the ball sticks almost, they're all like within five feet of each other. And we're like, who the hell is that? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck am I watching? Then all of a sudden he walks up and I'm like, oh, it's just Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth it's yeah. literally fine. It's not even. And then he just casually walks up and he's like, how close was that to going in? <laughs> I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. like everybody's laughing. I mean, he was he was being genuine, but I mean. Just to watch those guys like be able to put that ball anywhere they want, 
and just to have the ball move anywhere they want. It's incredible. Also mentally in that practice round, that's like, yeah. okay, I'm, I'm hitting at this flag, but then like, okay, I'm imagining that flag is not even there. I'm going to pretend the paint is the back left. If, mm-hmm. the, if the flag is front right and hitting practice shots to that yeah. and use it, you know, not even the flag is not even in your mind finding whoever, you know, the guy in the, the green shirt beyond it and, and taking those targets. Mm-hmm. Um, just to see how the ball then reacts and lands in those different spots. It was Yep. It was cool just to be like that close to them. Uh I mean what and for the price of it, I mean that was totally worth it. You know, I got a, yeah. we got a free we were there for like eight, nine hours, right? It might have been more than that. Might even be more yeah, because we didn't get yeah, probably like ten, twelve, somewhere in there. I mean we were up there, got fed, um, had a good time, got to watch the best in the world do it for one of the big big first majors. Uh and this is the first time Oak Hills hosted it in it since a uh, while. Uh, Jason Duffner, right? Yeah, Duffner was the last so one. Like twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, so it was it was cool. And then, um, man, yeah, that's that was just a really cool experience. And thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.